that's a four inch tube, seven sixteenths wall, and it fit perfectly over the three and an eighth pipe. It was actually a little bit small, so we had to heat this up to get it over the pipe so it fits really, 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 really good. Heated the casting up, welded it. Like, I couldn't be happier with the outcome. What's, What's up, Light Bright, Bright Nation? Nation? Today, we are building axles. Why are we building axles? because these things need to be indestructible so I can keep up with Kevin and Brittany. So let me show you what we got. So I've had these axles for about two and a half, three years now. I picked these up in California. I have a 99 Dana 70 U rear axle. It used to have drum brakes. We cut them off. We have full rotors on there now. So this is a full free float Dana 70 rear one ton, eight lug. This is a 70 inch axle wheel mount to wheel mount. So this is plenty wide enough for the LJ. Brand new calipers. These are 2002 rear calipers and 2002 rear rotors because they're gonna fit. All I have to do is build some brake brackets and we'll have rear discs. This, this is gonna be the premise of this whole video. This is a Dodge Dana 60, driver side drop. The reason I like the Dodge is because the offset of this pinion is much more than uh, than the Super Duty. You get like three or four more inches than the Super Duty. The only bad part is, is it has this cast central axle disconnect. Which is a weak point. This is terrible. This is a very weak point because this is a cast section here. So if you hit it hard or something, you could break this. Also, you have to get a one piece axle shaft. So what we're gonna do is I ordered this big chunk of steel from Schulson's down in St. George. What we're gonna do with this is we're gonna cut this whole section completely out and re-sleeve it with this big guy. We are also gonna recap and sleeve this side so that it'll look uniform and I can trust it and it will be indestructible. If she bends this, I, I don't know what else to do. It's because I went off the side of a mountain. <laughs> Please don't do that. Please don't do that. It's not gonna happen. We also got the master cylinder out of a Dodge 3500, it bolts directly to the TJ. You have to shorten the, the pin that goes inside here just a little bit, but this will match the brake pressure of our all of the rest of the calipers so that she will have really good brakes with one ton axles. This is a great upgrade for the TJ. Brand new rotors for the front, brand new rotors for the rear. The other thing we got is the disconnect axle. So this gets rid of the two piece disconnect. It makes it a one piece. But if you're gonna go one piece, you gotta have a locker. So we have an ARB air locker that's gonna go in the front axle. Brand new axle shafts, locker, 513 gears, rebuild kits, and then this. This is gonna be the heart of the front axle. This is the Yukon Free Float Hub Kit. What this does is it replaces the stock Dodge hubs because they're non-lockable. They're just direct connected. So we've already chucked those and we're gonna use this Yukon free float hub kit. Along with that, brand new U-joints because the only part that would be used is the U-joints. So I got brand new U-joints too. So this axle will be brand new minus the tubes when we're done. So we got it jigged up on the table. We're gonna cut this section out. First thing I have to do is measure how long the inside of the tube is, and it's 31 and 3 8 so that when we put sleeve it back together, it goes back to 31 and 3 8 Another thing we're gonna do is measure this gap, and it's 25 and a half, but I want a good chunk on each side to weld from steel tube to the steel tube, so we're gonna leave it about 3 quarters of an inch, which leaves us at 24 inches. So we're gonna cut this tube at 24 inches. I got a jig up on the table. I have all the measurements, all the angles of the dangles and stuff. So now we're gonna cut everything and get ready to receive it back. So let's get the cut. So. Yeah, the cut All right. I would probably start this side of center. Okay. Um, maybe off the, off to the right a little bit. And then you can like, just on the break tonight. the pink skies waving goodbye. Come on, break the night. Leaving our cases around. around. Trying to sleep, it's time to sleep. 
This plasma cut this like butter. It was super smooth. I anticipated it to be like throwing sparks absolutely everywhere and taking a lot longer, but it didn't. So you guys wonder why I love this so much. <laughs> <laughs> That's 7 16 material. That's 7 16 four inch tube. And it literally cut that like butter. That is absolutely impressive. Hey, Chris. Yeah. How much of a pain in the butt was that to get on there? It was, it was pretty tough. It was. Cause uh, like an idiot last night, I was like, oh, let's just see if this fits. Ooh. And I got it like halfway on. So we had to spend the morning trying to get it back off so that we could put it back on. Hey, it was worth a shot, right? Heck yeah, it worked great. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, uh, <laughs> I was a bit concerned there for a minute, not gonna lie. I was like, this thing's not gonna come back off, and how the heck are we gonna get it all the way on? But, uh, guess what we did? So it's sleeved. We had to slice it just to get it off, because I couldn't even get it off this morning. Uh, but it's, she's sunk in there about that far, so she's, she's in there pretty good. So we'll just bevel that out and weld it up, weld it around a couple of passes. Get this nice and hot again, and weld it up. So I have the other side in the freezer and I figure we got about seven seconds before it's like stuck on there to get the right angle of the dangle. So uh, here we go. <laughs> While Beck is getting that front axle cleaned up, another thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go full hydro on that Dana 60. So we picked up the PSC eight inch double-ended ram, which will go perfectly with the Barnes clevis and steering kit that we got, the tie rod kit. But one thing I wanted to do is the knuckle is just single shear and I wanted to double shear that. Now they don't make a weld on kit for the Dodge and ironically, I have an old Barnes four wheel drive high steer weld on kit for like a Super Duty. 
when I was building my brother's truck, we had ordered these and we ended up not using them. So what I'm gonna do is chop them apart and build a double shear bracket for these knuckles. So what I did is I took the top plate, cut it down to fit, and then once you assemble all this, I drilled this out to three quarter also, by the way. So I got a three quarter inch bolt and I have the clevis kit. And now this guy fits up into here. And now we're double sheared. I also took a piece of quarter inch and made a back plate that I will trim down and weld that on there. Now we have a double shear welded on for the Dodge. Uh, this should work out pretty good. Let's get it welded up. So here's what it looks like when we got her all welded up. Now we just have to clean it up and we'll paint these all up black. We just gotta shim it when we put it together. And uh, yeah, double shear for a Dodge out of a Super Duty Weld It Yourself double shear kit. So check those out too. So I was out here tinkering in the shop yesterday, you know, wasn't gonna do any real filming. Um, cut out those body bolts that were buried under there and just test fitting a bunch of stuff and I got the tank back in it to test fit that and put the body down and the next thing you know I'm putting some bolts in it. And then got the uh, rear axle situated to find out how far back we're gonna put things and then that led into just take the transfer case off the old motor and let's go put that uh, spare case on the motor and next thing I know I have it in the frame trying to mock it up and here we are so I figured I'd probably have to stop so I can film some of this <laughs> the motor and the trans is together it's not the real trans it's just an empty case but it's just so I can get stuff mocked up I got it under there we have plenty of clearance I'm actually a whole inch from that mount to flat bellied on the chassis. So we are doing really well. We got a lot of clearance here, just about a finger. I don't know, about three quarters of an inch on this side. A little bit more on this side because that side has a plate built into the firewall. So there's that plate right there, but we're pretty centered up. I have a good amount of clearance right here for the AC and we are really high like I pulled this sucker all the way up as high as I can get it that oil pan is almost flush I think it hangs down about an inch or two but uh, I think this is where we're gonna go with it so what I'm gonna try to conquer today is these Barnes four-wheel drive LS mounts I'm gonna try to get these somewhat located and get some mounts on here and hang them as low as I can but as high as I can so that we can stay out of the way of the links and the steering and the header all together. We got plenty of room in here, but uh, that's what we're gonna do today is try to get uh, the motor hung in the chassis because once this happens, we should have frame mounts here pretty quick for these arms. <laughs> also, Beck got the Dana 60 all welded up. This thing looks so sick. That's a four inch tube, seven sixteenths wall, and it fit perfectly over the three and an eighth pipe. It was actually a little bit small, so we had to heat this up to get it over the pipe so it fits really, 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 really good. Like, I couldn't be happier with the outcome. And then we just welded it up, heated the casting up, welded it, I wrapped it with a fiberglass mat to get it to cool down all at the same temperature, and it looks sweet. Also got the hubs double sheared for the full hydro setup, and I made sure we have clearance, so it's in here right now. I don't know, at least a quarter of an inch to the top of the, the, the top plate here, so. Lots of clearance. Um, we're missing a couple of more pieces to put that front axle together, so as soon as they get here, we'll do that. But today, like I said, I think I'm gonna go ahead and build some motor mounts for that. All right, so the first thing I like to do when I'm building things is I like to get out my CAD program and then um, we'll open up a new file right here. So this will be a new file. Bam, new CAD file.
Ta-da. All right, now that that's gone, again, we'll open up our CAD file and we will rough in the mount I want off a of frame. Should be pretty easy. Take this guy, we'll put it on here. We'll trace her out. Ooh, look at that. This CAD Pro draws a perfect circle. So anyway, so you got that guy. We're gonna put it right about there in space. So we're gonna need it like, like so, and then down. We'll put a little radius in here. We'll come down pretty far to get some good, something like that, I bet. And that'll go right there. All right, let's print it. Printed. It's gonna come in the frame probably somewhere like right here. Which gives me a lot of room. There's bolt access. I can get the bolt in and out of both sides. Pretty sweet. Let's go cut this out as, I don't know, some quarter inch. Quarter inch should be good. Now we drop another one. Get that one all printed out. Voila, let's cut this one out. Well, I'm letting that piece cool. We're gonna get some of this 120 wall, inch and a half? I think this is inch and a half, 120 wall. Good stuff, solid. Had it laying around in the back. I'm going to use my icrometers and cut an angle on the back of this for this plate. So I think we're gonna end up somewhere in that vicinity. So we're gonna go like so. Let's see how good I do. And not too shabby. I think I could work with that. And I'm just gonna cut a radius in that for the mount itself. Now I'm gonna big gusset on this side. This is why I'm doing it offset like this. I'll show you how it comes together. Anyway, I think it's gonna look something like this when it's done. Not so sharp. That's all right, we'll be able to take it out. Let's go cut it. All right, now that we got that tacked in and I got this cut, you can see my marks. Let's check this thing out. That's what we're gonna do right there. And then I'll put a gusset across this backside but I wanted to get this pipe in here. So let's get this thing tacked in here and see what she looks like. And there she is. She's got a little, little curve to her. Did that on purpose, just for some artsy fartsy. Um, now we're gonna run a gusset, probably like from here diagonally and just put a little triangle across this bottom just to give it a little bit more strength. And uh, I'll do that once I pull it off because I gotta pull the urethanes out of here to weld that up. So we'll do that on the bench. And now we gotta do the other side. And pow! Boom, pow, pow, boom. I don't know, there she is. Now we're gonna take them off, weld them up, get them back in permanent. Well, we got them in. Now we can lose that thing. <laughs> Oh, there she is. She's under her own weight. Yeah. Sweet. She's level. Everybody's happy. See that trans mount, that trans mount's perfectly square. Ugh, now we gotta go do that trans mount. Woohoo! We got some boxes in from Rock Crawler today. Chris is bringing in another one. Let's see what we got. Oh boy. <laughs> So these are the new series Rockzilla frame rails and I've been really anxious to get these in because we, we can't really move forward with the axles until we have these because this is the base of the rest of our measurements for the axle and also the frame. Let's go get these in place. Perfect. All right, so Chris, when he was building the motor mounts, he had this set up 
to keep the trans up and now we have to get rid of it so we can have the room to put the frame rails on. This is gonna line up right about here, but because we have this body mount here with the gusset, we're gonna have to notch this out a little bit. Just do some custom stuff so everything fits right. All right, well, we got them cut and fit up and they're just clamped on there right now, but they're located. And you can see that we need, why we need that inch and a half body lift. Cause here's the lower pickup and here's the upper pickup. Without this, this lower pickup would have to sit down an inch and a half and now we're flat belly. So that's why we got the inch and a half body lift. You can see there's enough room on this side for the rear pickup because the bolt goes up and down. And on the front, you can see we're a little bit tighter because of the floorboard. That's why this bolt goes through horizontally. Pretty excited. Just got to fit up this plate, the bottom plate, the lower skid so that we can build this trans mount. Probably do that in the morning because it's late. Like always. So pretty excited about this. We're gonna get, get that plate in there in the morning. So last night, Chris got the frame rails fitted in perfectly. So this morning we split the Jeep and we got the axles centered up perfectly where they need to be. And then we gave Rock Crawler a call and conversed with uh, all the measurements and all the information that he needed. Rock Crawler will also do the same for anyone else that also gets the Rockzilla kit. So now at this point, we are just waiting on the links to come in and uh, this is pretty exciting. After talking with Rock Crawler and getting all of our link measurements, we also found out that we have stretched the wheelbase five inches in the rear and four and a half in the front. So before we go any farther on these front axles and actually put new parts in them, we want to finish welding on the outside. Now that the links are on their way, we have trusses and stuff coming. So we're not going to be able to finish these axles until that part is complete. Oh, the housing is still empty. Yeah, it's, they're still empty. So unfortunately we can't finish these axles in this video like we wanted to because now we're waiting on links and trusses because I'd rather have Beck weld all the trusses on there before I fill it full of new parts. Otherwise we burn up the new parts. So unfortunately, that's all we're gonna be able to get done in this video. But we do have really fun things that are gonna be going on between now and the time of when our other parts do come in. And yeah. I have quite a few things that are still rolling in outside of axle parts. Oh boy. So it'll Miles. be nice to kind of have them accumulate more. And also we are going out of town for a little bit. So there's that as well. Yeah, so we have a little bit of time. Hopefully a lot of stuff comes in so we can do a couple videos back to back to back to back right. on this LJ video, mm -hmm. uh, LJ build. Oh, I'm so excited. Anyway guys, like always, thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe and share. And remember, you can get all your Light Bright merch and decals at lightbrightstudios.com. Bye. See you guys. Some of you guys have been asking about the parts that were originally on my LJ that are no longer. I do have some things available here. We've got rear fenders, front fenders, Gas tank skid, it's kind of in rough shape, but I mean, if somebody needs it, like, let us know. This is a SMB filter, and the filter that's in it is the cleanable one. And then, of course, we have um, my tires. They are 37s, but they, because of how thick the tread is, they are 38s, so it's 38s all the way around. Uh, these are Mickey Thompson's, and this is AV's Pentler wheel minor trail damage on them but if you guys are interested in any of this please feel free to contact us at lightbrightracing at gmail.com <coughs> me, 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 me. Chinese is me Chinese. signing for the axle Signing for the axle? Yeah, this is just... That means axle.
It's empty, though. It's empty. My heart. Oh my god. <laughs> Why you gotta be so heartless? <laughs>